Welcome to another video on this channel. It took me a while to create a new video and find something to talk about because somehow I found myself at a point where I lost some motivation. And I can tell you why. I think every creator knows that feeling when you find yourself at a point where you can question your complete work and your complete portfolio. And over the last years I got this feeling over and over again and somehow I think it is a good feeling because you should reuse this to reset yourself. So until now I did a lot of different projects and client work in different genres which took me to the point where I am right now. Having good clients who come back because they appreciate my work and want to work with we together. But doing jobs from all different genres brings you to a problem where to put all that different work and how, I mean, in your portfolio how you structure and post all this stuff on your social media, on your website, and what to focus on in the future, what kind of videos and photos you want to focus on, what clients you look for in the future. I deal with all these questions over the last weeks and finally come to a point where I think I know what to focus on and how. That's why I also deleted nearly all my content on Instagram, created a new account for my, all my client work, and made a plan of how I want to present myself on social media. And this is also going to affect my YouTube channel because I don't want to be just another YouTube filmmaker who talks about equipment and gear and how to use it. There are plenty of good people on this platform doing it like this and you know it as good as I do. That's enough good people talking about the same gear at the time. So on this channel, I want to focus on cinematography and behind the scenes work for the future. For me, the most helpful videos are when somebody like Danny Gewertz, who is a big inspiration for me, by the way, talks and teaches about his cinematography, how to start a project, doing behind the scenes, achieving a specific look. All these topics helped me a lot in the past and that is what I want to teach and give back to you guys as well. So that means that there are not coming a huge amount of low quality videos on this channel, but when I bring something out there, there will be a lot of input and value for you. And maybe to give you the chance to think about if this channel is interesting for you, I will work with my XT4 in the future for small run and gun projects and photo shootings. And for bigger productions, I will use my Blackmagic 6K Pro. So there will be a lot of informations about these cameras, how to use them, what settings I use. But like I said, also a lot of how to do or behind the scenes videos where I talk on actual projects about what equipment do we use and why, how to set up lighting and so much more. Maybe you know all the feelings I talked about and find yourself in my words. If yes, please let me know in the comments if you have the same struggles. And now let's start with the value content of this video where I want to talk about how to do moody portraits and what tricks I use to create these non-standard portrait stuff. I think you heard this already a lot, but you should definitely consider to suffer, especially when waking up early. But when you're planning to shoot outside, the sunrise and the sunset gives you the best and softest light to create stunning portrait shots. The soft light is simply more flattering for skin tones. You can avoid shadows in your model's face and get rid of those strong shiny spots on your model's face. The only time I can recommend shooting in the middle of the day is when you want to achieve some strong looks with uh, shadows and light, but it definitely needs some practice to find the sweet spot between underexposing the shadows and overexposing the highlights. So force yourself and your model to stand up early next time, shoot during sunrise, go for some lunch, having coffee and come back for the sunset. When you want to create a series of photos about the one shooting you're going to do, try to focus also on different things. Look out for the detailed shots of the surrounding, give the model some props to play with, 
or just do some empty shots of the location or landscape you're shooting in. Because if you create some kind of gallery with these shots, the viewer gets a better idea of the story you're trying to tell with your photography. Shooting on eye level is just one of the shooting angles you should focus on. Try out some special things next time, putting something off the surrounding in, in the foreground of your picture, go from wide shots to close-ups, put your model on an elevated level and shoot against the sky, uh, bring your model in different positions, lie yourself on the ground and so much more. I think you're getting the point, just be creative and don't focus on the standard eye level portrait stuff um, that gets boring from time to time. I know a lot of people are trying to tell you how to take portraits and teach you the general rules how a picture is pleasing to the eye of the viewer. But I think when you want to stand out from all the photographers out there, you have to go your own ways and also do something wrong. So nothing is wrong, by the way. Photography is art and art is a personal taste. So just do what you like. But what do I mean with go for the wrong? A lot of time I'm ignoring, for example, the root of thirds and I just compose the picture how I like it in that moment. Another example is instead of setting the focus on the model, you can try focusing on your background to give it some artistic style. And with that, we are also talking about telling a story again. So when the background is blurry all the time, the viewer don't get an idea where the story you're trying to tell with your photos takes place. Some other examples of going for the wrong is adding grain, which I love, but a lot of photographers try to avoid grain and get just sharp and clean images. But when you want to achieve a moody and kind of dirty look, add a lot of grain. The Fuji cameras already have a setting to add some grain to your JPEGs, which already looks pretty good. And talking about these internal Fujifilm camera settings to style your SEO pictures is very nice when you want to create some straight out of camera Instagram bangers. So I already did a complete video about these so-called Fujifilm recipes, which I link in the description. You can check it out there. Um, but you can check these recipes out on fujixweekly.com. And my favorites are definitely the Portra 400 and Kodachrome looks. And that's it friends, my tips and tricks to create these moody looking portrait stills. Let me know if you find these tips helpful and always keep striving. Hopefully see you in the next video. Goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.